Hello again, back for part two of our gear talk for Sire. Uh, if you guys didn't get a chance, we did one for their other model, the, uh, the D5, and this is the P5. Consequently enough, the P, I would only imagine, stands for P bass. So right out the gate, what caught my eye immediately on this base was this awesome finish, right? Tell me that this color, I don't know what they're calling it. This looks like a surf green to me. Tell me this color doesn't look rad with this torque pick guard, right? It's awesome. Super cool vibe, wonderful, pops in, in, in the light, looks great. And then let's get to the, the meat and taters, right? You got the roasted maple neck, like their models that they're doing, which again, roasted maple necks have made a huge, huge, huge impact in the overseas model um, from multiple companies. And I can understand why it, it brings, if you're a tone wood uh, person, I feel the roasted maple uh, rounds out and warms a tone. It's, it makes it a little sturdier because it's roasted and it gives a sonically a quality to that body and to that base that you might not have with standard maple. Uh, regular maple on its own is very bright, it's very aggressive in my experience. Uh, if you've played um, bases that have maple, maple necks or maple fretboard maple neck, they're very toned forward. It's very bright, it's super um, in your face. And if you have uh, that combination of woods with a very bright and very in your face electronic setup, it could be a lot. <laughs> so I like that they, they went with this. Aesthetically, I really appreciate the look. I love the gloss fingerboard. And then if you look, the, the back of the neck is not. It's got that, so that satin finish and it, it feels great. It's super fast, it's very comfortable. It feels like you've already played it. And if you know, if you know what I mean by that, uh, you'll appreciate that. But if you don't and you're new to bass or you're new to the channel, that already worn in plain feel is something that you'll really appreciate because it just feels like it's an extension of your arm and your hands and your fingers at that point. You know, your, your thumb's gonna move without grabbing. Nothing worse than being sweaty on a gig and it's a glossy neck and you're having trouble moving to the note or you know whatever the issue may be. I prefer this style neck and this feels like some, it's been played for years. This hardware is, I, I want to say from my experience with some of the Sire models, this is the, the, uh, the upper end models hardware that they're using for these newer models, the P5 and the D5, which I think is great because uh, my initial complaints on the, my introduction with Sire uh, when they first launched a few, quite a few years ago, not quite a few, a few years ago, um, was that the tuning uh, keys felt kind of cheap to me. And uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the preamp that came stock with their jazz bass. That was the one I got, that was my intro. And uh, it was heavy, it was very heavy. I wanna say it had to have been 10 or 11 pounds. Could have been more, I didn't weigh it. I just, you know, go, you go by how it feels after, after gigs. And it was too heavy, I wasn't a fan, I, I sold it. I'm not hating on Sire for what they did then, but like I had said, in the past, what I really appreciate about Sire is they're very attentive to customer feedback, right? The body weight issues, the electronics issues. They even had something happen recently where some of their bases that they had had some quality control issues. They reached out to the people that were having those issues. They put up a thing on social media, said that it's been addressed, and they fixed it. 
They didn't try to sell them. They didn't sweep it under the rug. They fixed the problem and, and you know, very transparent. I, I respect that a lot. And I thought that was, uh, that was really cool. Kudos to them for, uh, for taking care of, uh, of their brand and their reputation. This is my only uh, thing with this bass, and I want to talk about this and, and bring it up front and center before I say any more good things about it, because like with all gear talks, we're giving you our very candid assessment and opinions for this. My only thing is this pickup. It just feels like it's lacking in low end, but it does that mid-range bark and growl super well. If you're looking for a bass that's in the $500 range, and again, this is $499 which is insane. Uh, Chris and I have been racking our heads to try and find where, where they're able to accommodate that kind of price point and still put out an instrument that retains such quality as far as the aesthetics, the ergonomics, and the feel goes. And, and you know, we just got these, so we haven't really had a chance to, to get into the, into the meat of it. But, you know, at first glance, I, I don't know how they did it. <laughs> I really don't. Maybe I'm just so used to being beaten over the head with these crazy prices for overseas instruments that just leaves me kind of speechless that I, I'm just a little overwhelmed that the simplicity of this bass is matched by its quality and what it offers for $500. I think that's amazing <laughs> because I'm, I, like I said, I, I, I was uh, in a store recently and I saw a, a, a Fender Road Worn Jazz Bass, it was a Fire Mist Silver. It was beautiful, but it was thirteen hundred and twenty nine dollars for a made in Mexican jazz, made in Mexico jazz bass. That's crazy. This is made in Indonesia, and it's four ninety nine. What I love about this particular, you know, combination of price and quality is that, you know, if you're a new player and you're overwhelmed with the options uh, of bases that are out there, but you don't necessarily want to make that deep dive in an investment for a $2,000 instrument. And, you know, a lot of times some of these overseas bases, they're teetering in that $1,500 or $2,000 range. That's a, that's a huge investment. What if you don't like it? What if you're buying an instrument for your kid, like I talked about in the other video, and they play it for two months and then they stop? You're going to be mad because you're out $1,500, $2,000 and it's going to sit there. $500 is a lot easier to justify and you get a great instrument. 
I, I really, I, I'm, I'm happily eating crow from my first interaction with Sire those years ago to now. The, everything that I had issues with, short of the, of the, the pickup being kind of lacking in the low end, everything else is great. The, the, the woods they chose, the finishes they offer, the hardware they're using, you know, and it's string through. I don't know if I said that. I don't think I did. They made it string through. So if you're looking to get more sustain out of your instrument, and a lot of people are, a lot of people do, you really like that option, this can give you that option. It's top loaded for this. Uh, it was sent to us that way, but yeah, you have a string through option that comes with it. I know I have bases where I, I had... Uh, Tex and Luthier uh, friends out here locally add the ferrules for the string through and, and I like that. If you don't like that string tension when they are string through and you like top loading it or you bust a string and you got to top load it, you can. You know, whatever you like, whatever your options, $500 makes it really hard to argue. Uh, I don't go out and play a bunch of overseas instruments. I have gotten a chance to play some really nice ones, some overseas instruments from a lot of different companies, you know, and predominantly while the main companies may be in Canada or maybe in the USA or maybe somewhere else, most of these are made in either Indonesia or China. So you would think that because of their origin points for these instruments, they're going to have a lot of similarities with respect to quality control. That's not true. Um, I've played lots of instruments that have come from Indonesia that weren't very impressive when you factor in the price point. Um, and that's one of the biggest things I want to drive home with, with you guys is that uh, whether you're a, a seasoned, experienced player or you're just starting, a $500 investment for a quality P bass that you're going to be able to get great tones out of, out of the box, it's hard to argue. It really is. And again, it's meat and potatoes. You got a volume and a tone control and you, you just run with it. It's got a great rock tone uh, for, for you guys that are looking for that. Um, it's, got a, a, it's got the ability that when you roll the tone back, it hits that instant P bass nostalgia that a lot of people like. You want that Jamerson tone, that Motown feel, that Carol K kind of vibe, whatever you want, right? Like it goes organic, vintage, modern, pick tone. The pick tone on it sounds particularly impressive. Like if you're looking for a punk rock kind of bass tone, this bass can do that, especially with its focus on that mid-range growl from the stock pickups. Both of the models, great, right? Again, it's hard to argue the price point and the amount of instrument you get, right? All of the, all of the boxes are checked for if you want something, just pick up and play and you're not gonna have your doubts on, on its quality or its playability, 
Sire hits that really well. My personal complaint, because I'm bougie like that and I've been playing long enough to where I know what I like, what I like, and what I hear is just that low-end response on that p base pickup. And I don't think it has to be anything tremendous. I just think it's something that once you notice it, you'll always notice it. And if you don't address it, it'll be something that you could easily trip your feet up on. And it's not even a big thing. It's not because this bass sounds awesome. It really does. I, I've had it longer than Chris and I, I brought them over today to, to, to talk about that. And Chris is going to have them for a while and he's going to get to, to get into it. And he's going to see his and, and come to his own conclusions just like I did. But, you know, that was my thing with this model and the other model is just a little more low end response on those pickups. Those stock pickups would go a long way. Um, I have a feeling like if you if these had a preamp behind them, they would be beastly. Uh, so they're just just lacking just a little bit for me on that low end response. But if you really want that P bass tone, that that really mid range growl that you can get when you dig, um, this bass does that like in spades, 100 percent. That's this bass. If that was its job, it's doing its job. It understood the assignment. Before we wrap this up, I just wanted to jump in and give my two cents. I have significantly less experience with not only this bass, but Sire as a whole than Chuck, and maybe some of you do. Maybe some of you don't have any experience. I don't know. I kind of fall right in the middle. So my little Sire experience starts in 2019 while we were at TGU 19 in Germany. Uh, they had the, what is it? The, I think it's the V7. It's the jazz bass with all the bells and whistles and the EQs and the whatever. I didn't have a chance to play it. I just saw it on the stand and, and when Will, Nick, and I think it was Patrick did the mid-level bass shootout, which you can check out right here, um, that was included in there and I haven't watched that video since we did it so I don't really remember what their verdict was. But I remember at the time feeling indifferent about it. It's like, oh cool, it's, just, it's another Fender copy is what I thought. Um, and I used to kind of be against the Fender copies, and now I'm a little bit more of a champion for it, and we'll get into that in a second. But the little experience that I have with this bass, uh, in a nutshell, I'll say that I am absolutely blown away and impressed. Uh, Chuck told me the price of these instruments when he got here today. Before that, I would have guessed that we were probably 800, maybe no less than 700, but that would have been my guess. If you would have handed me this bass, and said, guess the price, I would have guessed right about 800. So to find out that it's a little under half of that, it almost feels like we're getting two bases for the price of one. So that has made me both love it more, appreciate it more, and be more impressed by it. But then in turn, as I was sitting here, as Chuck was rolling, was making me more skeptical. Like, how did they do that? Because I am really, you know, a little uh, out there when it comes to what I like to feel in my hands and I get really into that. I don't care what an instrument sounds like when I first pick it up because I know that if it doesn't sound how I want it to, I know how to change that. So I'm always like, how does the neck feel? How does this feel? And the neck on this feels incredible. I, I love roasted maple. Uh, I didn't notice until further inspection that the, the fretboard is actually glossed and no, it's like noticing that it's glossed, but the back is satin. It's like, okay, they could have cut a corner and saved some cost by either glossing the whole thing or just leaving it all satin. But the fact that they went the extra mile to just gloss the fretboard 
It's like, okay, well, they didn't save costs there, I don't think. I mean, granted, I don't have a business degree, and I don't know that much about manufacturing, but I'm going to guess that it would be cheaper to not gloss it. Um, the tuners feel great. The knobs feel great. This truss rod here being at the butt end of the neck, I don't know if that has any advantage or disadvantage for the adjustment uh, versus it being up here. But again, what I do know is regardless of whether it has an advantage or not, that's still an extra route that you have to account for in your CNC. You gotta cut it. You gotta cut the pick guard and get a pick guard that fits that. So again, you can't accuse them of cutting a cost there. Um, really, it's, it's, you know, looking at it with a fine tooth comb that neck is straight as an, and these are, these are not set up, right? These are fresh out of the bag. Fresh out of the bag, the action is on point. Like, I mean, I, you know, I like a little bit of a lower action, um, but they feel great. The neck, again, is straight as an arrow. Knowing that it's a string through body is, again, another, where did they cut the corner? Where did they save the cost? My guess, like, Looking, and this is like, this is being super nitpicky. Cause again, overall I am impressed. But if I had to like fine tooth comb it, okay, maybe they're saving some money on the logo. If you look at it up close, it's like, all right, that just looks like a little decal, like, you know. Um, other than for that, uh, you know, going back to my, how does the wood feel? Again, the neck feels like this is the expensive part of the base. And again, just in my opinion, the body is where if I could make an improvement, it'd be there. Not that it's hor like horrible, but it does feel a little bit like, like the wood could have a little bit more mass or meat to it. Um, but again, that's, that's being exceptionally nitpicky. For 500 bucks, made in Indonesia, which in my experience of the overseas bases, which even, I mean, calling them overseas is, is you know, I'm talking about the big three budget overseas markets being China, Indonesia, Korea. In my experience, they, they're, they get better in that order. So like Korea is typically the best. Indonesia is usually number two. And then China usually falls in dead last. But for, for being, you know, in my opinion, in my experience, the second most best market, um, fucking it's, it's incredible. The, the neck this is what I was gonna say, the neck feels absolutely on par, almost identical with the Spectre Pulse 4. And I believe that's a Korean instrument. Will you double check, is the, is the Pulse 4 Korea? Korea. Okay, so the Spectre Pulse 4 coming in at uh, $1,100, I believe. Made in Korea, so in my opinion of the overseas, which is weird to say, because even like Germany and Japan are overseas, but like I don't lump them into the same category. Like in my opinion, it's like Germany's the best. Japanese is an absolute close second and America probably comes in third. German, I don't know. German just does it for me. The instruments, the cars, the beer, the... So being Indonesia versus Korea, this feels on par with the Spectre. I think that if I were to compare it to an MIM Fender, I'd say probably on par. Maybe this neck feels a little better. But again, an MIM Fender coming in between 700 and 1300, depending on the model you get. So I think fresh out of the box, it's set up great. It looks awesome. Chuck mentioned that the pickup not having quite as much low end response and being a little bit more mid heavy, which whether that's detrimental or a positive is really up to you. Because obviously if you were running this through like, like an SVT or something that has a natural mid scoop, you might you know, kind of balance and neutralize your character a little more. So it'll counterbalance with a scooped preamp really nicely. I also see it hitting fuzz and drive better, um, being a little bit more mid heavy, you know? And then obviously, you know, rock and roll, punk rock bass. Hell yeah, which is funny, the bass that's called Marcus Miller P5 would be a great punk bass. But either way, that is my uh, four and a half cents on the what is it, P5, that I have like an hour's worth of experience with, and I'm in. I'm gonna drop uh, probably a passive EMG. I have what I think is a one-of-a-kind passive EMG that was custom made for me, so I'm excited to drop that in there. And uh, starting next year, January of 2022, we have something special coming every Friday that uh, will heavily feature this for most weeks. So until then, we will see you 
I mean, we'll see you for the next video, but, you know, coming January, we'll see you every Friday. And uh, with that, I'm going to pop out of here, and we will wrap the video up.